northern Rockies, at least 800 old cabins, fire lookouts, and ranger stations still stand on federal and state public lands. These structures, nestled among fir trees and dotting the banks of creeks, are of immense historic value and are irreplaceable. They were built by early forest and park rangers, homesteaders, and ranchers who worked with hand tools and hard-earned ingenuity. Right now, the skills that are necessary to maintain historic buildings are in the hands of a very few people. But in the Forest Service Northern Region, a historic preservation team has been working under the authority of the National Historic Preservation Act to help remedy this situation. In a partnership program between the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Forest Service and the Department of the Interior's National Park Service. Since 1991, these highly skilled craftsmen have been rejuvenating buildings constructed between 1880 and 1940 throughout the Rocky Mountain region, making repairs to weathered out roofs, walls, and windows. And in the process, the team has been annually training some 50 to 70 federal and state public lands employees. The crew's work is important for two reasons. Getting things just right ensures that the historic integrity of each building is not diminished. And good facilities maintenance makes sense so that every new nail, every piece of glazing, and each shingle or shake will last for another generation to appreciate. The trainees learn a mixture of craft and art, how to breathe new life into some of the nation's most treasured structures while maintaining the historic traits that makes these buildings unique. The team has worked under the guidance of Bernie Weisgerber, a journeyman carpenter and graduate of the National Park Service Williamsport Preservation Training Center, the only federal facility of its kind. At famous places like Yellowstone National Park's Old Faithful Inn and Montana's Bannock State Park, and at other less well-known facilities throughout the Northern Rockies, the historic preservation team has trained people like Forest Service employee Dave McKeldry. This is Cougar Peak Lookout on the Lolo National Forest, north of Thompson Falls. It has fallen into disrepair. It hasn't been used in a number of years. And we plan on restoring it for the cabin rental program using techniques that I have learned at uh, the preservation training workshops uh, sponsored by the Forest Service and the Department of Interior. The old lookout has some problems with paint uh, windows and old cedar shingles that are going. Uh, lookouts in general are very unique uh, as pieces of architecture. It's very important that we preserve the uniqueness um, of these buildings preserve them in such a way that their, their original function is still evident. The historic preservation team offers an average of four training workshops per year. The training takes place on site, with the team working side by side with men and women who will be responsible for the long-term upkeep of the buildings after the team's work is finished. The team has taught managers how to investigate historic structures and plan preservation projects. They've also taught trainees how to repair and replace windows and doors, wood shingles and shake roofs, stabilize and restore log structures, and redo masonry, painting, and coatings. Bannock State Park's John Horning was one of the team's trainees. We have quite a number of buildings here at Bannock, and the, the windows are a major uh, maintenance problem for us here. We like to try and keep the glass in, in as many of the sash in the buildings as possible, keep the birds and animals out of the buildings, uh, the old glass, uh, the putty. Uh, the design of the windows is all important features that we need to look at and be able to repair without changing or taking away from what was originally intended by the people that uh, originally constructed the buildings. The training has helped me identify proper procedures that are needed. Uh, I've brought them back and, and we've taught that to my crew and it takes some special training and some special techniques 
to keep the historic integrity intact on these buildings. And the training offers uh, not only the hands-on experience, but it also emphasizes the state of mind that you really need to have. TW Services, Fred Paulson, who works in Yellowstone National Park, attended several of the Historic Preservation Team's workshops. Uh, our main project is to restore the historical structures in Yellowstone. Uh, the Old Faithful Inn is our main concern right now. Uh, we're doing the uh, log work on the building. We're also uh, restoring the windows on the building. Uh, the training that I've take, taken uh, with Bernie, I have had a, a log training with him. Uh, we have also uh, gone through the window training, which was really beneficial to us uh, uh, with the techniques of glazing, how to deal with uh, the old fabric. Uh, and we, like I say, we've used it in these windows behind us here. Uh, I have a large number of employees. Uh, they've also taken uh, the roofing training from burning, which was very uh, beneficial to us up on the top uh, around the crow's nest area. Uh, we had redone that uh, this spring, and that was very helpful to us. Along with the hands-on workshops, the historic preservation team has developed a training session for administrators on sensitivity to historic preservation. What's more, the team provides trainees with hard-to-find tools, tools that are required to match the historic techniques originally used when the buildings were constructed. As word of the historic preservation team's work spreads across the Northern Rockies, administrators like the Lolo National Forest, Greg Munther, have begun to realize the value of the team's skills. So what we've been able to accomplish is get the project done at about the same cost we would by contracting, and we've also been able to transfer those skills to our trainees. I can't think of, as land managers, any more common ground in historic preservation to work in common for common objectives. And it's worked very well on our projects recently where we've had some pilot projects going between the Park Service, the BLM, Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, and the Forest Service working on similar projects together. Each local facility manager needs to have a collection of skills necessary not only to manage their structures, but to also to be able to train the people that they have to work with on how to take care of these structures. The bulk of the buildings restored under the direction of the Historic Preservation Team are still used as Ranger District Headquarters, fire lookouts, workstations, or housing for Forest Service crews. Others are widely used by the public as interpretive centers, museums, and rental cabins. It's um, really important in this day and age to preserve what little we have left with our historic past. Um, as many people know, at one time, old buildings such as this were considered a liability to the government rather than a resource. Well, the few that remain today are very important as they're a, they're a, a touch with, with a past that's rapidly changing. 